There are so many Chris's, each with an amazing story to tell. <laughs> Sharks! Sharks! 
Hey, what's got your fish scale so sharks. long? Sharks! Sharks? Yes, sharks! Our friend Ollie was chased off by sharks! Slow down, slow down. Tell, tell me what happened. Well, you see, my friend Puffer here and I, we were racing across the open sea when we swam into shark waters. Before we could turn around, we spotted our friend Ollie the octopus swimming towards the sharks. Oh, wow. We tried to warn her, but all of a sudden, more sharks came from out of nowhere and chased us. Puffer and I swam one way, and Ollie swam the other. We got separated, and now we can't find Ollie anywhere. Wow, that's a pretty wild story. Well, lucky for you, you just stumbled upon me. If anyone can help find your friend, it's me, Crash the Monterey. And who are you? My name is Cleopatra, the anglerfish. But my friends call me Cleo. That's a very cool name. But what's the deal with that weird fishing pole hanging from your head? It's not weird. And it's not a fishing pole. I told you, I'm an anglerfish. Wow, I've never seen a fish that looks like you before. And what's that little round thing bobbing next to you? <laughs> That's my friend Puffer. He's a puffer fish. A puffer? He's totally cute. But what's he saying? <laughs> He's describing the shark attack. Oh, well, you're going to have to translate for me, Cleo. I don't speak puffer. A big old shark raced towards Ollie, nearly swallowed her in his big open jaw. Whoa, that's just wrong. Totally wrong. I screamed to warn her, and she managed to swoosh away, but that hungry shark kept chasing her. We swam as fast as we could, but we lost sight of our friend, and now she's missing. We're scouring the ocean to find her. I hate to be the one to break it to you, but the ocean is a pretty big and scary place. How will you find your friend and keep safe at the same time? So many dangers lurk out there. Sharks are just one of them. We are quite capable of taking care of ourselves, I'll have you know. <laughs> okay, fine, I'm just saying. You two little fish don't stand a chance out there in the big blue sea. I happen to know everything there is to know about the ocean. Is that right? Sure thing. I've spent years studying fish, from those living in the ocean to ones zipping around freshwater streams. And that's helpful how? It means I know what I'm doing, but we still could use your help. Of course I'll help you. When there's a friend in need, Crash is a friend indeed. <laughs> Get start by looking around this reef. That's great. These are my digs. I can show you around. Oh wait, I know someone who can help us. Really? Who? Fella by the name of Breeze. He's a sea turtle, and he sees everything, if you get what I'm saying. I bet he'll know something about your friend. How exciting! I've never met a sea turtle. Let's go! Not to worry, Stony here's a bit grumpy, but totally harmless. Harmless? Get too close to him and you could get stung by one of his venomous dorsal fin spines. Say what? I say hi to that guy every day. 
had no idea he was venomous. I did wonder why he was trying to look like a rock, though. Stonefish are quite crafty. They can camouflage their bodies to look like a rock or a chunk of coral. Then zap <laughs> your lunch. This way. Hey, fellas. How's it hanging? Catch you later. Uh -huh. Watch out. Lionfish, be careful. Be careful of what? Those are good buddies of mine. They also have poisonous dorsal fins. Killer dorsal fins, lion bro. Killer is right. See those feathery, spiny fins? They're tipped with venom that help them capture prey. They lure fish in, so don't get too close. Sneaky guys. Wow, Crash. I have to say, your reef is super awesome. Super awesome indeed. Whoa! What about those guys? They got some hidden superpowers I don't know about? These fish? They're just normal fish like us. They're cold-blooded and can adapt to all kinds of temperatures. You see, us fish also have gills, which allows our body to breathe and extract oxygen and water. Most fish also have one or two sets of fins dorsal fins and tail fins. Our skin is covered with scales, lots of scales. And when we have babies, we lay eggs. Wow, Cleo, you are one smart fish. Thanks. Did you know us fish have been around for some 530 billion years? Ugh, can't count that high with my fins. You're just gonna have to trust me on that. The earliest records of fish date to before the dinosaurs. How do you know so much about, well, everything? I graduated from the most prestigious deep water university, Plankton U. Oh, Plankton U. You really are a smart fish, aren't you? Tell me more. I can tell you that oceans cover over 70% of the Earth's surface and contain over 98% of the Earth's water. Oh, oh, I got something for you. Did you know there are five oceans? Of course I do. I'll bet you a mouthful of plankton you can't name them from largest to smallest. A mouthful of plankton? My favorite food? You're on. All right, give me a minute. From largest to smallest. Okay, well, let's see. You have the Pacific Ocean, and then you have your, the Atlantic Ocean. Then there's the, uh, the other one on the other side, uh, the Indian Ocean. And then there's, of course, the Antarctic Ocean. And last, but not least, we have, um... Oh, <laughs> thanks, Buffer. The Arctic Ocean. <laughs> Don't worry, Puffer. That's not a shark. It's a sea turtle. All right, this is where the sea turtles hang out. My buddy Breeze must be around here somewhere. Wow, I'm so excited. Sea turtles are so fascinating. They've been around a really long time, about 110 million years. They might not look like athletes, 
but they have flippers that help them paddle and swim thousands and thousands of miles every year. Sea turtles have excellent eyesight. They also have a great sense of smell. And while they don't have great ears, they can sense vibrations and sound frequencies. Male sea turtles never leave the water, but females emerge on land during mating season, returning, incredibly, to the very beach they were born. Wow, what cool fish sea turtles are. Sea turtles are not fish. They're reptiles. Reptiles? No way. Yes way. Reptiles that live under the sea. Did you know there are seven species of sea turtles? No kidding. Yes. And the largest of them all is called the leatherback sea turtle. They can reach over six feet, as big as a grown man and weigh like 1,000 pounds. Hey, speaking of cool sea turtles, there's my friend Breeze. Hey there, Breeze. What you doing, man? Hey, Craig. I'm just hanging out in the reef with all these cool fish. Who are your friends? This here is Cleo and Puffer. Whoa, what's an angler fish and a puffer fish doing in our reef? Looking for their friend, Ollie. They had a bit of a run-in with a shark. Oh, I just heard some sardines talking about that at the other end of the oh, reef. That's great news. Let's go. Follow me. Thanks for helping us! Well, you're so very welcome, little lady. better go find these mackerel Breeze was telling us about. I think we already did. Look. <laughs> wow. Look at them. Whoa. The greatest shoal on earth. They are schooling fish, Cleo. Schooling fish are large groups of fish that swim in huge swarms, also called shoals or schools. Sardines can't really defend themselves, so swimming together in huge numbers is their way of keeping safe from predators. Aren't they incredible? Spectacular! because they claw together to form what looks like a big ball of fish. A fast swimming compact ball of fish. Trying to catch one is very confusing. <laughs> That's right, Puffer. It is amazing to see and quite beautiful. A shawl can be a mile long and a hundred feet deep. The way they move together and sing it looks to me like fish ballet. These fish are able to glide through the water and quickly change direction. Care to know the three unbreakable rules of fish schooling? Yeah. Number one, move in the same direction. 
direction as your neighbor. That makes a lot of sense. Number two? Number two. Stay close to your friends. Awesome. And number three? At all costs, avoid bumping into your friends. Hey, I bet Puffer can talk with them. No way. Puffers can talk to sardines? Of course they can. Crash, you can be so square sometimes. Right, sardines? He says they did see her. That's great. They say she was swimming really fast, but the shark wouldn't stop chasing her. Oh no. Last they saw her, she was headed that way toward the coral forest, hoping to escape the shark for good. Thanks, guys. Have a fun day at school. Well, you hear him, gang. Let's go. Well, we got a ways to go to get to the other end of the reef. I'll be happy to alleviate your boredom with some fantastic fish facts. I had a feeling you would say that. Cool. We're entering a coral forest. Totally awesome. These beautiful reefs are found in tropical and subtropical oceans in shallow, warmer areas. Look at that! See that coral? It looks like a maze or labyrinth carved in stone. That's a group brain coral! Very cool! Brain coral, huh? You mean to say it's very smart or something? No, silly! It's named Brain Coral because of its shape. That's amazing. I've been around these corals my whole life and I never knew their name. You are so smart, Cleo. Why, thank you, Crash. <laughs> How old are coral reefs? Hmm, well, coral reefs have existed for around 10,000 years after the last glacial period when ice melted and caused the sea level to rise. Coral reefs are mainly found around islands in the volcanic regions. They're held together by calcium carbonate structures. Oh, what? Calcium carbonate. They're built by a colony of tiny organisms called polyps, or stony corals that secrete calcium carbonate. Whoa! Factoids, are you saying these coral are alive? I, I've been swimming by them all this time just thinking they were cool to look at. But I never thought they were alive. Alive they are, Crash. Coral are creatures that actually build themselves an external skeleton by linking with one another, which turns them into stunning coral structures. Well, they're really colorful plants. Coral are not plants, they're animals. Say what? Look closely. See those arms that look like branches? Those corals are made up of thousands of animals called polyps. Polyps? Are they fish? Not a fish, but an invertebrate. Inverto what? That's an animal lacking a backbone. Tiny, tiny creatures. Some no larger than the head of a pin. Some bigger than a human foot. Spineless? Yes, spineless. What about eyes? Mouths? Do, do corals eat? Hard to believe, but coral 
do have a mouth surrounded by tiny tentacles that they use to catch small fish, plankton, and tiny food particles. They even have a stomach. No way. Way. I'm seeing my reef through new eyes. Are all angler fish as smart as you, Cleo? Well, I'd say I'm a pretty special angler fish. that over there? That's a blue tang. He's really pretty. Pretty, but not defenseless. Blue tangs have sharp spines on each side of their tail, which are said to resemble surgeon's scalpels. That's why the blue tang is also known as Dr. Fish. These spines usually remain flat against their body but they will extend them when they feel threatened as the tail thrashes from side to side they can cause serious damage to an enemy I would have never guessed oh look a squid how cool alright squid they're one of the most fascinating sea creatures how's that? Hundreds of species are known to exist in both fresh and salt water. They have gills like us fish, and sometimes they're mixed up with octopus because they also have eight arms with suckers. Some even have ink sacs. But squid also have two more tentacles to lure prey. Whoa! I've heard fish tales of squid brave enough to attack sharks. I've heard that too! They're heroic fighters! The giant squid is the largest invertebrate in the world! Some have been known to weigh about 1,000 pounds! Whoa! Whale-sized squid? They're also very intelligent! And they have three hearts! Three hearts? Yeah! Crazy, right? Oh yeah, sea urchins. There's more than 200 species of sea urchins. Aren't they awesome? So many species and so many colors. They're what's called bilateral creatures. By what? Bilateral. Means they have five sections that are equally the same size. They also have spiny shells for protection. You wouldn't want to mess with one of those guys. No fins? No legs? They don't have fins, but they do have legs. Or rather tubes in the bottom part of their bodies. They use them to propel themselves across the ocean floor. Guess how long some of these guys can live? <laughs> Not even close. Try 200 years in the wild. 200 years? Amazing. Wow, what a cool guy. What is that? Looks like a dinner plate. That is a sunfish. Very cool. The ocean sunfish 
is famous for being the largest bony fish in the world. Their scientific name is the mola mola, and they're often called the mola fish. They can reach a weight of up to 5,000 pounds. 5,000 pounds? Yes, and as big as 10 feet in length and 14 feet high from fin tip to fin tip. Whoa, huge. With a size like that, I'll bet they're quite safe in the ocean. Well, they do have their enemies. Sharks, killer whales, and sea lions are known to eat sunfish. No kidding. Speaking of sharks, I wonder where Ollie could be. I hope she's safe. We should be coming near some of my Monterey family. I bet they'll be helpful. Hey, look, it's my cousin. Cuz, how you doing, man? These two bottom dwellers here are looking for an octopus being chased by a shark. You, uh, seen anything like that? Really? What did he say? He said he heard some eels talking about a poor little octopus being chased by a big old shark. Did he say which way they went? He says we should talk to the moray eels. Oh, and look out for the jellyfish. Jellyfish? Wow, I love jellyfish. Well, these ones stink, so we better be careful. Thanks for the help, cuz. Catch you later. The moray eels, anyway. The moray eels are a long way away. Are you sure you two are up for this? Once we venture out of the reef, things could get really dangerous. I'm not scared. Are you Puffer? <laughs> okay then. Well, Ollie is sure lucky to have two friends like you. Wow, we must be entering the Manta Ray Cove. Oh yeah, this is where my family hangs out. Check out how many Manta Rays there are. I've heard about this place. So many, <laughs> cool. What did he say? He's asking about the Manta Rays. Oh, yeah, he wants to know more about us Monterey's? Well, tell him, Cleo. Tell him how cool we are. Well, Monterey's are part of a subgroup of fish that are made of cartilage, which is that rubbery substance found in human noses and ears. Oh, gross. We're made of human noses? Sick. No, no. You're not made of noses. Cartilage inside the nose is the same as the cartilage inside you. Oh, phew. You had me going there for a minute there, Cleo. What else do you know about manta rays? Well, humans started calling manta rays devil fish because of their horn-shaped fins. Well, we are handsome devils. Just look at the pectoral fins on that guy. They look like wings, see? Our fins help us move the water backwards to propel us forwards. It's sort of like we can fly through water. Like a superhero. That's right. And did you know us Monterey's have our very own cleaning stations? Of course I do. It's kind of like a car wash, right? Yeah, it's like a car wash, where these tiny fish get together and eat all the parasites off our back. <laughs> That's pretty cool, but you have to admit, it is a little weird. I guess you could say we're not your typical fish. 
just like you anglers, we're very unique. And stick this in your gills if you've got any. Monterey's have one of the highest brain to body ratios of any fish. That explains your giant ego. Don't I know it? Beauty and brains. <laughs> What did he say? He said that for a manta, you're very friendly. Thanks, Puffer. Well, you know, my papa always taught me to help out the best that I can. To live in the sea, you have to live in harmony with everyone else. You know, Crash, you're a pretty smart fish yourself. <laughs> Jellyfish! Ooh, be careful not to touch him. If we get stung too many times, the poison from their stings could kill us. It's okay. There's not too many of them. We can swim through. I'm with you, Buffer. Those guys look like blobs of goo. That blob is a very simple creature made of jelly-like material. About 95% water and 5% salt and proteins. Jellyfish have no brains, no lungs, no heart, no gills, no blood, no bones, no skeletons, no digestive systems, no internal organs at all. What? No way. Way. They're composed of three layers. The epidermis, the mesoglea, a thick, elastic, jelly-like substance, and an inner layer called the gastrodermis. Amazing! What about eyes, ears, gills? Jellyfish don't have eyes, ears, or gills like us. How do they know anything? How do they navigate through the water? Well, they have what's called sense cells that help them stay upright in water, sense light or chemicals in the water. Really cool, fellas. Yeah, they've been around for billions of years, too. Way before the dinosaurs. Wait, they don't have any fins either? How do they swim? They are umbrellas or bell-shaped bodies are ideal for floating. They're not strong swimmers and often let the ocean currents carry them through the water. Their bodies also pulsate, meaning they contract up and down, which also helps them swim. Some jellyfish can even squirt water from their mouths to help launch their bodies in a particular direction. Some jellyfish are so translucent, it's hard to tell them from the surrounding water. Other species are very colorful. I've spotted yellow, red, green, blue, pink, every color of jellyfish you can imagine. Some are even striped. I've even seen jellyfish that actually light up. Some glow. Others give flashes of light. This attracts prey or food for them to eat. It also helps protect them from being eaten by predators. Please do tell me they have mouths. They do have small mouths in their bell-shaped bodies to eat food and discard wastes. They also have lots and lots of tentacles version of arms. Some of them contain millions of stinging cells that poison and paralyze their victims. Ouch! Sounds painful. It can be. That's why you have to be careful when you swim near a jellyfish, because sometimes it's hard to avoid their stings. Because some jellyfish hang out in really large numbers, and when that happens, it's called a bloom. You always want to make sure to avoid a bloom. It's happening. Swim slowly, calmly, just that natural. Be very quiet, Puffer. Never been in a bloom before. Stick close, guys. Crash! I'm scared. 
Scared? Ah, oh, Cleo, this is nothing to be scared about. We fish are a pretty cool bunch, much smarter and braver than anybody knows. Let me tell you a story about my friend Johnny the Mackerel and the time he took down a whole fishing pole all by himself. He did? Wow, what a brave little fish. How did he ever do that? He knew about fishing lures because he was almost caught once. But he smartened up and decided he would never be caught again. From that day on, when he saw a fishing lure, he snatched it with his teeth and pulled the whole thing into the water. Wow, that is very clever. Right on. The fisherman was so mad. We're almost there, see? That wasn't too bad after all, right, Cleo? No, it wasn't. Thanks to you, Crash. We made it! Thanks for helping me through that, Crash. That was a close call. Any idea where we are? I think so. Pretty sure we'll find the more eels this way. Let's go! Oh look! That's a seahorse! A seahorse? Never heard of a fish called a seahorse before. Aren't they incredible? I always wanted to see one. They call them treasures of the sea. That's not a fish, is it? No way that's a fish. It is a fish. Seahorses are the only fish that swim upright. They're amongst the slowest swimmers in the water. My friend Shipper the Clownfish once told me he watched a seahorse swim through the water for over an hour. And the seahorse barely moved five feet. Wow, that is slow. Is that seahorse looking at me or at you? I'd say me and you. A seahorse can move both of its eyes separately. One eye can look forward, the other behind. They can also change shape and color to match their surroundings. Sick. Hey, look at that tail. Seahorses have very flexible tails. They sometimes use to latch onto seaweed to hitch a ride through the water. There's also something else that's very unique about seahorses. They often mate for a life. They like to swim in twos, sometimes linking their tails together. And when she's ready, mom seahorse can lay up to eggs inside a pouch on the dead seahorse's belly. Seahorses have pouches like kangaroos? No way. Way. Ah, oh, check that guy out. Wow, I can't believe it. It's a distant cousin. <laughs> that thing is part of your family? Good. Sorry, but that's a face you can't forget. That thing is a frogfish. He's awesome. He might move slowly or barely at all, but he strikes so fast, his lunch never has a chance. Oh, hi there. It's me, your deep sea anglerfish cousin. <laughs> nice seeing ya. Oh, look, there's an eel. Let's ask him. Watch out, Crash. That is no eel. That's a banded sea crate. A sea snake. Poisonous. Very powerful venom. That guy has quite a bite, and he isn't friends with the eels. He eats them. Good save, Cleo. I don't think he sees us. But hey, if he eats eels, he'll lead us right to him. 
Let's follow them. As you can see, they're really fast swimmers. They're also amphibians, which means they can live on land as well as in the reef. Ah. Ah. Whoa, hey, what's the deal, man? Where'd you come from? <laughs> I like to eat puff of fish. If you've got a problem with one of my friends, you're gonna have to deal with me first. What do you pesky fish want? Go ahead, Cleo, you tell him. Say hi, Mr. Eel. The name's Marty. Marty the Marine Eel. Hello, Marty. Oh, we're, we're looking for our friend Ollie the Octopus. An octopus, you say. Well, perhaps I did see an octopus, perhaps I did not. Well, did you or didn't you? Yes, I did. Being chased by a shark, nonetheless. Where did she go? None of my business. You've wasted enough of my time as it is. Now get lost, unless you'd like to stay to the main. I'll give you whatever you want if you can help us. Mm, I want to eat you. Uh, uh well, <laughs> I don't think I'm too tasty. I'm all bones, really. Look, buddy, why don't you just help us and we'll be on our way? I'll make you a deal. I will ask you questions about moray eels. If by some miracle you get them correct, I will tell you everything you want to know. But if you answer in one wrong, I will eat you. Deal. Crash? Wait, I'm not sure I can. Cleo can answer any questions you throw at her. Ain't that right, Cleo? Yeah, I guess so. Okay, first question. Are we more a eel's fish? Or are we snakes? I, uh, well, uh... I know you moray eels are fish and not some type of snake. Even though you kind of look like a reptile. You might not even have scales, but you are in fact a fish. Very well, very well indeed. But riddle me this. Why do I open and close my mouth all the time? Well, you have to open and close your mouth so, um, uh, uh, to maintain water flow and help you breathe, so it's not necessarily because you want to, um, eat us. I do want to eat you, but you are right. However, you still have one last question. What makes us Mori Eels so unique and amazing? Well, yes, that's a bit of an open-ended question. How can it be so difficult to know what makes us Mori Eels so amazing? No, 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 of course, it isn't. Well... One amazing fact about moray eels is that they come in so many different sizes. They can range in length from a tiny six-inch fella to a 15-foot giant of the deep. 
Also, moray eels have a long dorsal fin which runs from the head to the tail. But unlike most fish, they don't have pectoral and pelvic fins. Yes, moray eels are primarily nocturnal, so they like to hunt at night. Very good. Go on. Moray eels spend most of their time hidden in the caves and rock crevices on the bottom of the sea. They are an ambush predator, so they wait for the perfect prey to appear, then suck. How ironic you should say that. Uh, yeah, um, uh... Moray eels are carnivores, so they like meat. Their favorite foods are octopi, squid, cuttlefish, crabs, mollusks, fish. Mm, octopi, fish, yes, yes. <laughs> right. Murray eels snatch a prey by surprise, then coil their body around it until it becomes flattened enough to be swallowed. <laughs> <laughs> or they tear it apart and eat it chunk by chunk. Yes. Moray eels have two sets of really sharp teeth. One set is located in the jaw and the other in the uh, 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 throat. Yes. The teeth located in the throat are used for, for, for breaking up the food to facilitate the digestion. Ah, uh, yes, the throat teeth. Isn't Mother Nature marvelous? Yes, also the Murray Eel's teeth are pointed backwards to prevent the prey from predators in the ocean. They're often hunted by larger sea creatures, such as sharks, groupers, barracudas, and- Enough. Don't even mention barracudas in my presence. <laughs> they give me the heebie-jeebies. Oh, are you satisfied then? Or- I could go on about how the grouper fish loves to eat moray eels, starting with the tender parts of the belly and then moves to the eyeballs. Okay, okay, enough, enough. You've answered the three questions correctly. Just stop talking. Now you have to tell us what you saw. Well, a promise is a promise. I'll tell you what I know. I just finished my breakfast. Not my first breakfast, mind you. My second breakfast. When suddenly an octopus darted by as fast as her eight little arms could carry her. Behind her wish, a giant shark, teeth mashing. Ravenous, bloodthirsty, the shark whizzed past, stirring up the water, sending us eels into our dens. The angelfish hid in the seaweed, the clownfish in their anemone holes. So I shouted, that way, octopus, if you want to escape the shark, Head through the cave. It's much too small for the shark to fit through. That cave leads to the lobsters of the sunken ship. Go see the lobsters. They can help you get to the river and escape the sharks. Wow, what a fish tail. <laughs> You saved her life? Well, I have my moments. Be 
Besides, I hate sharks. Even more than I love to eat octopus. You said that cave was a shortcut. That's right. Well, normally I wouldn't trust more eels, but desperate times call for desperate measures. Let's go, guys. Oh, thanks for your help, Mr. Murray. I mean, Marty. Just don't mention to anyone that I helped you. Or damage my gill bread. Okay, guys, well, we have a problem. Problem? <laughs> Nothing my Monta brain can solve. We're saltwater fish. The river is home to freshwater fish. Our bodies aren't designed for fresh water. If we go in there, we'll die. What about octopi like your friend Ollie? Can she live in both the fresh water and salt water? A few sharks and other fish can adapt to both environments, but Ollie? No, she can't. She must have found a way to survive in the river, but how? Well, how do you think she did it? One thing is for sure, we need to go talk to these lobsters living in the sunken ship. <laughs> Look, Crash, a puffer fish. That's not a puffer fish. Puffer here is a puffer fish, and he's big and round. That's just a regular looking fish. That's what our puffer looks like when he's not threatened. But since the shark Tell me more about puffers. Puffers are a bit clumsy. Tend to bump into things a lot. So they can't get away from danger as fast as other fish can. But they have this unique ability to swallow a lot of water, which inflates their very elastic stomach into a round ball. It keeps them safe, but makes it harder for them to talk. Isn't that right, Puffer? <laughs> Gotta admit, I have the urge to bounce and play a little hoops. I wouldn't mess with him, Crash. Puffer might look harmless, but his body contains enough poison to kill about three dozen humans. <laughs> Whoa! What did he say, Puffer? He knows about Ollie and the shark? Wow, the whole ocean is talking about it. That's incredible. What does he know? He said, we need to go talk with the lobsters of the sunken ship. Who are these lobsters? Incredible creatures that helped our friend Ollie. And he's sure they'll help us too. Great, let's get to that sunken ship. There it is! We made it! Oh, how cool! I bet this is a sunken pirate ship. You know, I think so too. For many years, I've heard stories of human divers coming down here looking for treasures. Sick! What kind of treasure were they looking for? Delicious plankton? Delectable crustaceans? Oh no! Gold. They were looking for gold. Gold? What would you do with gold? You can't even eat it. Uh, I'm not really sure why humans do what they do sometimes. Oh, look! There's some divers now! Oh, wow. That's humans underwater there. But how are they breathing? Don't tell me humans are fish, too. No, silly. They're using a contraption that allows them to carry oxygen on their back and breathe it through their mouth. No way! That's far out! 
Hey, I heard if you get close enough to human divers, they'll come up to you and pet you. Oh, yeah? I'd like to see them try that with Marty the Marae Eel. The lobsters must be inside the ship. We should go and find them. What did Puffer say? There's sharks down there guarding the entrance to the ship. One of the few predators immune to pufferfish toxins is the tiger shark. He wouldn't want to meet one of those guys, eyeball to eyeball. Yes, Puffer, sharks are scary, but they're also fascinating creatures. People used to call them sea dogs. Sea dogs? They don't look like cute little dogs to me. Humans have given sharks a lot of different names. I think it's because they're such interesting animals. They're also called prehistoric hunters. Why prehistoric? Because sharks have been ruling the oceans for a very long time. Like 400 million years! Whoa, that is a long time. Hey, look at that guy down there. Look at him swim. Did you know sharks don't have any bones in their bodies? Their skeletons are made of cartilage and tissues. Just like that of the manas, Crash. In fact, manas and sharks are closely related. Are you saying some of my cousins could be sharks? I believe so. But take heart, Crash. Not all sharks are mean and aggressive eaters. Take the whale shark, for example. One of the largest sharks in the world. Yet he is a filter feeder. Whoa, he's so big. He is, but also very gentle and not aggressive at all. I'd love to hang with him sometimes. Maybe we have relatives in common. Who knows? That would be cool. How many kind of sharks are there? There are over 400 different species of sharks, and that's a lot. Did you know that you could tell the age of a shark by counting the rings on its vertebrae? Kind of like you could tell how old a tree is by counting its rings. Oh look, that's a nurse shark. Nurse sharks are the laziest sharks around. They refuse to move in cold months. Plus, they don't eat as varied as a diet as the other sharks, so they don't go chasing fish all the time. And because they don't need to move to breathe like other sharks, they just chill at the bottom of the sea most of the time. Shark eyes are pretty cool looking. Look at them, they look so serious. Yes, they have pretty incredible eyes. They can hunt and find their way around in very cold, dark waters. But they also have really good hearing and a pretty infallible sense of smell. I mean, they are a true hunting machine, these guys. Speaking of hunting, check out their teeth. Sharks have several sets of teeth. When they lose them, no problem. They grow back hundreds of times. Uh, that's a lot of teeth. Sounds like an army of soldier teeth. How does that work? Well, if a shark loses one tooth, the replacement ones that's sitting in a row right behind it simply move forward. Sharks' teeth shape range by species. Some have flat, rounded teeth for eating plankton, and others have sharp, serrated ones, designed to cut through bone and flesh so they can eat mammals, even people. Savage. The most well-known sharks are the great whites. Great whites. Wow. Yes. Just like the one chasing our friend Ollie, 
they grow pretty huge, over 20 feet long, and can weigh more than 5,000 pounds. They're one of the deadliest fish in the ocean. Even though they're known as man-eaters, they're only responsible for just five to 10 attacks on people per year. What do they eat then? Well, great white sharks are carnivores. So they eat small whales, sea lions, seals, sea turtles, and ugh, even dead animals. Whoa, check out that guy over there. Looks like he has a hammer for a head. Sweet. That's a hammerhead shark. Very aggressive. Check out the outer edges of that hammerhead. Do you see? That's where they have their eyes. Having their eyes there allows them a vertical 360 degree view, which means the hammerhead shark is able to see both above and below quite easily. Unfortunately for him, and fortunately for everyone else, it causes a huge blind spot directly in front of their nose. What's that buffer? He's pointing at that magnificent whale shark. You see those smaller fish following him around? Those are called remoras. Remoras are a host of fish. They attack themselves to the shark using dorsal fins that have evolved into large suckers. They actually help sharks improving their speed and agility in the water and by eating parasites off them. Can sharks swim as fast as me? Some sharks have been clocked at over 20 miles per hour. Whoa, that's fast. We better not let them see us. See that small opening down there? I'll bet we can sneak by the sharks and get into the ship through there. Let's go! Ah, hello there, little fish. Welcome to the sunken ship of the magic lobster. You're a magic lobster? And indeed we are! We are the magic lobsters, guardians of the treasure ship. Our oh, What do magic lobsters do? Well, we grant anyone wish you desire, of course. Really? That would be amazing! But there is a catch, a catch of the day! <laughs> Pardon the pun, I just couldn't resist. Well, we will grant you any one wish. If you can answer three questions about crustaceans. Rusty who? Hehe, <laughs> crustaceans, you silly goose. Does any one of you know anything about crustaceans? I do. I know everything there is to know about crustaceans. Well, I'd like to put that statement to the test. Are you prepared to take the challenge of the magic lobsters? I am. Ask away. Here goes the first question. Where is the crustacean's skeleton? Is this a trick question? I mean, where would the skeleton be if not inside the body? It is a trick question, Crash, because the crustacean skeleton is actually outside their body. What? That's right. The crustacean skeleton is a hard substance that covers their body and protects them. Whoa. Well done, my dear. You are just two questions away from your wish. Fire away. Okay, you never answer this. How many antenna do crustaceans have? That's an easy one. They have two. Sacre bleu. Well done. This third question will not 
be so easy. Are you ready? Yes. What is the difference between a true crab and a hermit crab? Hold on, Puffer. What makes you think? I'm trying to remember what our teacher taught us about crabs and hermit crabs. Hmm, let's see. Well, for starters, hermit crabs are not crabs at all. True crabs have five pairs of visible legs. That's including their claws. Now, that's walking legs, mind you. Then, under their tail, they have loads more, which they can't walk on, but which are used for circulating water over their gills and for holding their eggs. Swimming crabs use their walking legs for swimming as well. Now, hermit crabs. They also have five pairs of legs, but only four of them are visible. The fifth pair is hidden inside their shell and is used for cleaning the gills and removing dirt from the shell. Very good, very good. Go on. Let me see. Hermit crab is the old shell of another sea animal, like a snail, or anything he finds that can fit him, really. You see, the hermit crab has a soft abdomen that is very vulnerable to the outside and can be smushed easily, almost like a caterpillar skin. So it hides its back and in a protective covering. Now, the true crab uses its own natural shell. He already has its own exoskeleton that is hard and durable, so they don't need a shell to protect them. Oh, oh, oh. Mm -hmm. We are very impressed, little angular fish. What else can you tell us? Well, Regular crabs live in the water a majority of the time. They live, reproduce, and feed in the water or near the water. While a hermit crab can either be completely dependent on water, like the saltwater hermit crabs who live at the bottom of the ocean, or it can live on land, like the land hermit crab that lives on the beaches sometimes even a mile off the shore. Oh, Clayab, you have passed the test. We shall grant you anyone wish you want. So, what shall it be? We want to find our friend, Ollie the octopus. Oh, ha ha, sacre bleu. Ollie the octopus. She just passed through here trying to escape the shark that was chasing her. We granted her a wish to escape the shark by giving her the ability to swim up the river. You did? Are you saying that Ollie can now live in fresh water? Indeed. When magic lobsters can grant any wish. So. What will be yours? Well, we also want to be able to swim in fresh water. Right, guys? So we can find our friend Ollie and bring her back home. The wish shall be granted. And now when I snap my magic claw, you will be in the river. Croissant, croissant, croissant. Is cargo of a Yeah. 
that can live in both oceans and lakes. Salmon are born in fresh water, then migrate into salt water oceans. They live in both rivers and oceans? Wow, they're awesome fish. They are. They live in the ocean until they mature. Then they return to the river and spawn. Some salmon actually return to the exact spot where they were born to lay their eggs. Long journey. How do they know where to go? They use their scent, a skill called homing. Some salmon will travel hundreds and hundreds of miles to come back home. Whoa, look at them go. Woohoo! Where are we headed? Looks like this river goes on forever. Rivers can meander for miles and miles and miles. They do? Oh, yes. The longest river in the world is the Nile, located in Africa. The second longest is the Amazon. Thousands of fish species live in the Amazon. And because some of the river is so remote, new ones are being discovered all the time. The Amazon is home to unique species of fish, like the piranha, a meat-eating fish. than frogs. And when they are fully developed, they move to land. But they still need to live near water or they'll dry out. They soak in water through their skin. There are thousands of frog species, but they're all cold-blooded, which means that the air or water around them is warm, they're warm. If it's cold, they're cold. That's why they lie around on rocks in the sun. So that's how they warm up? That's absolutely right. Frogs have these long, sticky tongues. They whip out of their mouths to catch unsuspected prey. Better not touch me with their tongue at all. <laughs> Don't worry, Crash. Frogs prefer to eat insects like flies, mosquitoes, moths, and dragonflies. Frogs have excellent eyesight and never close their eyes. See those powerful back legs and webbed feet? They move upward, forward, and sideways all at the same time. What are they doing then? Frogs can jump very high. They're just having a good old frog time. <laughs> it's a, oh, uh, a waterfall. dropped us into a lake. A lake? Calm waters. Hey, a smooth ride. It's a freshwater lake. Aren't you glad we met those lobsters? Here we are swimming in fresh water. What kind of fish live here anyway? Many kinds of fish live in fresh water like bass, carp, catfish, and perch. Did you know that 40% of all fish species live in fresh water? 
yet less than 0.01% of the Earth's water is fresh water. What's that? Shh, I've read about this. It's a fisherman. Let's stay clear of that guy. Oh look, it's a group of koi. Nice looking fish. Orange, yellow, red, purple, magenta. Oh, I remember them. They're koi fish, and they're freshwater fish. They're kind of a carp that lives in ponds and lakes. They originally came from Asia, where they were revered for their beautiful colors and patterns. You know, in some cultures like Japan, koi are believed to bring good luck. They're very smart, and they have a long lifespan. I know of one koi that lived to be over 200 years old. Whoa, what's that one? He looks kind of like those koi fish, but way smaller. Oh, that's a cute little goldfish. They're very friendly little guys. Maybe he can help us. Ahoy there. I'm Cleopatra, an anglerfish, but you can call me Cleo. Oh, so nice to meet you. What are three fish like you doing in a pond? I'm looking for my good friend Ollie the octopus. Oh, you just missed her. She was here earlier today. She told us all about her dreadful story of a shark that chased her all over the ocean and up a river. She was so tired and hungry. We directed her to a safe reef where she could be free. Can you tell us how to get there? Follow the river that way. It will lead you back to the ocean. Copy that. We're on our way. Thanks. You goldfish are super nice fellas. congregate around oceans as well, including dolphins, whales. Whoa, what's that insane barking sound? <laughs> oh, nice tune. Those must be penny pets. Penny what? <laughs> penny pets means fit -footed. They are seals. They like to hang out in groups on rocks and soak up the warmth of the sun. Living the lazy life, aren't they? Grand. Yeah. Seals are believed to have evolved from land-based bear or otter-like ancestors. Bears? And now they're back in the water? Yeah. Guess they missed the ocean. I can understand that. They sure look happy and fat. They have a layer of fat under their skin called blubber, which keeps them warm in cold water. And their slick fur coat is streamlined for gliding through the water. They also have whiskers like a cat that help protect prey in dark, murky waters. They can also sleep underwater which is truly amazing for an air-breathing mammal. Let's go ask if they've seen Ollie. Let's not. Seals are really fast, strong swimmers. They have long, sleek bodies and powerful flippers. And guess what they like to eat? Fish! Keep low, guys. Watch out! What kind of fish is that? It's not a fish. Those are animals called birds. 
creatures with feathers and wings and hollow bones that help them fly! Savage! They eat fish? Not all of them, but many species like seagulls do. Cormorants, another bird, can dive 120 to 300 feet into the water to catch their prey. Pelicans, too. They can dive straight down into the water and zack! Catch an unsuspecting fish just like that! Uh, too many fish catching birds around here for my taste. Let's swim out of here fast. Speaking of birds that like fish for lunch, watch out! Those birds are eagles! Really good hunters! They have sharp talons and... Uh oh, he, he spotted us! Time to dive deep! Hi! You those three fish looking for an octopus? We are! I heard she traveled all the way up a river to get away from a shark. Now she's back. Sharks are still at her heels though. Of course, octopi don't have heels. But if they did, sharks would be all over them. Oh no. W which way did they go? Head for the reef. You better hurry up. I hear that shark's closing in. Cherry out. Good luck on your journey. <laughs> Is that your friend Ollie? And the sharks are still after her! We have to save her! Don't worry guys, I'll help her. No! Don't! They will attack you! Please, Crash, come back! Hey, you sharks! You better leave that octopus alone, or you're gonna have to deal with me! Be careful, Crash! Uh, I don't know what I'd do if anything happened to you. Righteous! Nice to hear that. Well, that's true. You are our friend, Crash. And we love you very much. This adventure gained me two amazing new friends. <laughs> Ollie, you're safe! What did she say? She said, three new friends. Friends. Totally right! I got me an octopus friend too! But Ollie, what about all those sharks chasing you? They seem to intend on devouring. Oh! Sharks! They're back! But. But. Wait, what? But Ollie? They're not gonna eat us, you say? Ooh, they're not gonna eat us? Awesome! Wow, she said that these sharks have been chasing her so long through coral reefs, open oceans, rock crevices, up rivers, down waterfalls, through lakes and estuaries, that they eventually grew so tired that they had to slow down. So Ollie, being the adventurous octopus that she is, started swimming next to them. They struck up a conversation. And you know what the shark said? What did she say? They said they were trying to catch up with her because they'd never met such a brave octopus before. And they wanted to make friends. No way. Looks like we now have new friends. What a fish tale for the ages, huh guys? fish and amazing new friends. Awesome! And so
so our journey comes to an end. This end will go down the story books. And that is just one of the many tales the ocean.